Hey everybody, and welcome to another G Power tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about t-tests. So we're going to go through um, all three major forms of t-tests, um, and uh, I, I know how to do them in this particular program. We are using G Power 3.1 on Mac OS, but uh, the functionality is uh, the same on Windows. And so what we're going to do is we are going to do all three before we jump into any other kinds of power analyses um, within G Power because there is a lot. So we're going to leave the default here as uh, t-tests because that's how it comes up default. But because in my intro video we did point by serial, we're definitely not going to do that. And so we are going to use these three today in this video. And um, in a future video, we'll talk about the bivariate regression ones. Um, and we'll also talk about the multiple regression one in uh, a separate video. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to run into the Wilcoxon before I do any other kinds of tests because I'd like to get to f-tests as well. Um, but I'll also show you generic t-test in um, uh, maybe in this video, but maybe in a separate video. We'll see how long this one uh, goes for. All right, so what I want to do is I want to first start off with the difference from constant, a one sample case. And you'll see that in both the paired samples and the independent samples t-test case, not a lot does change. Like, we don't really need to change too much. And, and that's the case in the Jamovi J-Power video um, that, that uh, is on my channel. There's, there's not a lot that we need to change. T-tests are fairly uh, similar in that respect. There are some things that do change that so... Um, I'll put um, chapter markers in here, uh, time codes in the description, so the uh, progress bar is... Uh, demarcated by one sample t-test, uh, independent sample t-test, and pair sample t-test. So you can jump around if you'd like. Okay, so here we are in one sample t-test. Again, um, t-test family statistical test is means difference from constant. So this is one sample's t-test. Uh, and we have a uh, type of power analysis we are going to do a priori. So we're going to try to calculate our required sample size uh, for this. And I'll show you what it looks like when we change it and when we, when we look at it. So uh, it doesn't really play well with dark mode, but um, hopefully you can see effect size and error probability. That I don't know why these are black and these are the other ones are white. I'm not entirely sure what they've why they've decided to do that. Maybe it just doesn't work well with dark mode, and that's I guess that's fine. <laughs> so we are going to um, go ahead and figure out what we want to do here. So first things first is I want to change this to a two tailed test. I like doing my t test power analyses uh, as two tailed tests. I just like doing my t tail uh, my two t-tests as two-tailed. A lot of t's sounds there. Uh, I like doing them as two-tailed because it's a more conservative kind of test. We're spreading our error probability to both to both sides. Um, we're doing a non-directional hypothesis kind of thing. Okay, so before I go into effect size D, we are going to look at these two, power and uh, power and alpha. So we're going to leave alpha as 0.05, conventional, and we're going to leave power uh, we're not, we're not going to leave it as 0.95, although you can leave it as 0.95 if you really want to um, test more people. But 0.8 is a happy medium between what is feasible, feasibly possible and lowering the threshold uh, for that, as well as not going too high on making a type 2 error, depending on how big the effect size is. Now, if I hover over um, effect size window here, it'll give me the Cohen's conventions, so 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.8 for D, small, medium, large, respectively. And... You know, I don't know what it is. Ha ha ha. I don't know what it is. So what we are going to do is we are going to click on determine so we can bring about what we have here. So what it wants from us is our um, mean H naught. So our null hypothesis value. This is the difference from a constant. So the value that I'm going to put in here is 5.6. Now, uh, that is the value that uh, I'm calling the... Uh, one sample t-test, the, the constant value that we're testing our sample mean against. And that is what mean H1 is, our sample mean. So I'm going to put in 5.2. Now I'm going to use these values again for uh, the independent samples t-test. So you'll see them again. Now it also wants us to put in our standard deviation or our theta. Um, and so this is particularly uh, important because it cannot tell you what the effect size is without a denominator. And this is the denominator. So in this particular example, it is 0.9. So we're going to calculate 0.4444 repeating. And so if you just click this calculate button, it'll put it here. But if you uh, click calculate and transfer to main window, it will also put it there. So my advice is just to click calculate and transfer to main window. That just makes the most sense. And then close effect size. So here we have 0.4444 repeating, I'd imagine. Um, and so now we have all of the input parameters. And all we have to do is click on calculate. So calculate is going to give us our non-centrality parameter delta, um, 2.88, and it's going to, to graph the central and non-central distributions here, the overlapping our alpha divided by 2. So this is 0. Uh, 0.025 here, alpha value, because the other 0. 0.025 is over here. And um, it places the critical value of t at 2.02, .02, which is just beyond this 2 mark here. And so it's telling us our degrees of freedom is 41, and that is because we have uh, a total sample size that we need to get to achieve 0. 0.0. Uh, 0.80 power of 42. And then we just do n minus 1 to get our degrees of freedom. So we need 42 people for this particular situation if uh, we are going to 
uh, use previous data of a test value of 5.6, a previous sample mean of 5.2, which had a standard deviation of 0.9. So in order to get that effect size again, we need to run 42 more people through whatever, whatever it is that we're doing. All right, so that's one sample. Now let's do an independent sample, Steve, because I'm, I'm sort of working my way upward here in this. So again, clears everything. Okay, it clears everything. Um, luckily, it keeps my choice of two for tails, uh, two tail tests. So that's what we're going to do. Error probability, alpha error probability, 0.05. We're going to leave that the case. Power, one minus beta. I'm going to change that now again to 0.80. Okay, now allocation ratio. This is new. This is new. Um, N2 divided by N1. So the reason why this is uh, made a ratio is because it's asking whether or not you plan to have equal groups or you want equal groups. And of course, you want equal groups. I mean, that's, that's the best way to get um, homogeneity of variance, not to violate homogeneity of variance between our two groups. It's the best way that it's the best way to show that your random assignments spread noise equally across my two groups. And so by default, this ratio is one. And that is because N2 divided by N1, if they were the same sample sizes, we would have a quotient of one. That's why the default is one. I suggest leaving it that way. Now, you may not end up with that situation at the end of data collection, but honestly, it's important to leave it as one and overshoot, then change the ratio to a number greater than one. So you have more in N2 or a ratio or a number lower than one. So you have more in N1. The idea here is to leave it as one just in case. But of course, this, this would pop up if we were doing a post talk, and then we would have to actually put in the value of N2 divided by N1 if we did not get equal groups. But a priori, beforehand, our goal is to have equal size groups because that's the best way to ensure robust T. So that's what we are going to leave it as. But of course, we are going to um, try to figure out what uh, Cohen's D is here before we determine what our sample sizes are. So we click on determine here and we have two options. We have N1 does not equal N2 and then you would put in your values here. While this radio button is not selected, you cannot change any of these values. By default, N1 equals N2 is the one where you have all of these values. So we were going to put in information here to best explore our Cohen's D. So I will put those uh, values in and um, you, will, you would get this from a sample or from a previous uh, piece of, of research or literature that has this information for you. That's why it's always good to have, you know, uh, means and standard deviations in your papers so um, it can be seen. Let me move over. Let me move this over. Nope. You can't see it. Okay. Sorry about that. I just realized that you can see this tray pop out. I don't know why cropping didn't allow me to do that. I didn't want to show this in just entire giant thing on my window. Like that just didn't make any sense. But in any case, um, apologies on the previous video um, where you probably saw a, uh, you probably saw a, uh, you know, a piece of writing where I was like, I'm a dumb, <laughs> you know, some, some text on the screen uh, saying, whoops, I didn't include that. I'm so sorry. So in any case, the side tray here is open. Um, I can show you what the side tray looks like. Let me, let me go back really quickly to the one sample t-test. There's the information that I put in for my one sample t-test. This is 0 0.56, 0 0.52, 0 0.9, and effect size D. Calculate, transfer, close, and I can close that if I really needed to. Let's go back to two sample here. Let's change this back to 2.8, okay? Uh, 0.5, and then let's open up the tray again and uh, put in our values here. So we're going to do 5.6 and uh, 5.2, and we are going to assume that um, the standard deviations for both of these were the same which is you know which is nice you know which is nice uh and then we are going to calculate and transfer to main window and then close the drawer and again we have the effect size of 0. 0.44444 repeating now that we have that all set up we are going to hit on calculate and now it says that uh to achieve 0. 0.082 uh, power we're going to need a sample size of 162 divide by two and we have 81 per now um this is always going to give you an even number for a independent samples t-test, so you end up with an allocation ratio of, of one uh, because these have to be the exact same number, right? Um, our critical t-value is 1.97, right? and so there it is in the non-central central and non-central distributions, and um, we have degrees of freedom of 160, which is n minus two for t-tests. So that is g-power t-tests, independent samples. So let's finish up with a match pairs design, a paired samples t-test. A lot of this stuff is going to be the same so uh, we are going to keep uh, 0.05. We're going to change this to 0.8. Oops, I already had the point in there. 0.8, um, effect size. You can see that it's now effect size DZ. If we hover over this, it should bring the tooltip up. Nope, it doesn't. It does not bring, there is no tooltip for that. 
So by default, when you open the calculation, the determine tray, you have from differences. So you do mean difference and standard deviation of difference. But you can also get it from group parameters. And so you would be able to, to punch in here the values. So if I were to, to do mean group one, mean group two, and then the correlation between those two, uh, so this would be, um, you know, mean of, of time one, mean of time two, standard deviation of that, and then the standard deviation of, of time one and time two, and then you would get that correlation value. So SPSS sometimes gives you the correlation between um, time one and time two or the pairs. Uh, JASP and Jamovi do not give you correlations, but you can run a separate correlations test for pairs, pairs of measurements on a single measurement scale or a single instrument. But by default, it's by difference. So if you already have your difference mean and your standard deviation of the difference, then that's what's going to put in for DZ here. So I am, let me see if I have um, one of the, or I don't. So I'm just going to make something up. Um, the mean is going to be 26.3 and the standard deviation is going to be 5.6 because those are numbers that I came up with. So the effect size of DZ, well, um, the effect size of DZ is 4.6. 696 or 4.7 mm, maybe i should make this a little bit bigger <laughs> let's let's make it 13.5 huh there we go it's still huge 1.94 oh well so we are going to do that and so this is a, f a fairly huge effect size uh and we are going to put that in there and i can bet that this is going to be a small amount of pairs yeah five all right let's not do that let's change this to point two we're looking for a small effect shall we so if we calculate this we're going to need 199 pairs 200 people just about uh, to calculate that. Um, and you can see a lot of this other stuff is the same. 2.8 is 2.8 is my non-centrality value. Um, critical value is 1.97. And we achieve a power of 0.8. So that's how you do uh, power analyses for the, the frequentist classical t-tests in G power. Again, apologies about the, um, the way that the uh, video was being cropped. Um, there will be a note in both this one and the previous video about how that, uh, how I've, I've rectified that. Stay tuned for more G power tutorials. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. If you like this content, please consider subscribing. For more, leave your comments, suggestions, and feedback down below. Thanks for watching.